All the plants, and with all due respect to our two-legged ancestors, the plants and the trees are our ancient ancestors. They're all here before us. So when we come to them to learn, we start with a giveaway. We start with an offering of some type. Um, I'm burning some sage and lavender for wisdom and mm -hmm. sweetness, and also it helps mm -hmm. keep the mosquitoes away from us. <laughs> and as you were saying, this is the uh, known as a tulip tree for the beautiful uh, flowers that come in the early spring that look like tulips. Uh -huh. It's the tallest, um, one of the tallest straight trees in North America. Because our mindset is typically uh, that everything exists for us mm -hmm. and I wanted to start with uh, remembering that the plants and the trees are these amazing medicine people that they are elders and medicine beings and that we come to them to learn um, of their gifts not to mm -hmm. find out you know, what have you done for me lately? What can you do for me next? Okay, so I wanted to burn a little um, offering and help us shift gears from our day-to-day -day mindset so that you can even consider to hear the voice of the plants. Right. And we can, uh, this is still burning, so I don't want to use, but the way that I was taught, you always give a, do a giveaway when you're going to gather anything. Mm, you're giving back. And you're giving back, and it's, a, it's really a symbol for us to remind us, mm -hmm. right? Because whatever we give came from the earth in the mm -hmm. first place. Mm -hmm. There's nothing we can give her that she didn't give us already. Mm -hmm. right. right. But it helps us to remember, and if we don't have something, we can give our silence, we can give a song, we can give anything. Tobacco was traditionally given by native peoples because they revered it. Mm. And because it was so important in ceremony to smoke the tobacco, that then to give it away was really meaningful. Mm. So my mm. bad joke is Americans should give money <laughs> to the plants. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but seriously, you give something you care about. So it doesn't have to be serious. I know people who give chocolate chips because that's their favorite thing in the whole wide world. You could give crystals, you could give water when it's dry. But I'm giving a piece of... Lavender, you can put your two cents in. This plant here is Leonoris cardiaca, commonly called motherwort. Motherwort. And when you look at plants, the best thing to do is to start with sight and then go to touch, mm -hmm. smell, mm -hmm. taste. Okay. Most plants are not dangerous. Now we have potent ivy, commonly called poison ivy, mm. here too, so that's one we're not going to go from look, <laughs> touch, <laughs> smell, taste, but this is the potent ivy. Oh. Does everybody know how to recognize this plant? No. Okay, three, it'd be really helpful. Leaves, right? Well, there's some, every, so many things have three leaves, so mm -hmm. that's, that'll keep mm -hmm. you away from too many things, mm -hmm. but it, it shape shifts all the time. It's a trickster plant. It's a paranoid plant. It's a plant that says, I am here to protect the land. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So I honor this plant because it's doing what I want to do and protect the land. Mm -hmm. um, so if you treat it with respect, that can help. The other thing is, is look at, you see that these notches in the leaf mm -hmm. here? One, two, here, and here. Mm -hmm. Whether it's shiny, whether it's big and tall, um, whether it's vining around the trees, or it's little like this, they almost always, almost always have those notches mm. in the three leaves. So that can be helpful. The other thing is, is, is you tune yourself, you can kind of learn the energy of the mm. plant, and that's actually the most reliable way to find it. Mm. Okay, this plant here looks like it is sweet woodruff. Yes, it is. Sweet woodruff makes a delicious, uh, the classic thing to make with sweet woodruff is wine. May oh. wine. Um, it smells delicious when it aw, when it um, uh, is dry, and when it's fresh, it doesn't smell at all. So you make the wine from it when it's in flower, and if you don't want to do it from scratch, 
the easiest thing to do is fill a bottle of white wine with freshly chopped up sweet woodruff mm. and wait about a month and a half or so and then you have a wine that not only is intoxicating and delicious but helps your liver. How mm -hmm. long? A month about six here. weeks. Oh, six weeks. Six yeah. weeks, yeah. Mm. So I love that, that you can drink something that helps your liver. This one here also is a liver helping plant. It's past flowering but it's called Prunella vulgaris or all heal. Self heal. This is a wonderful little plant. It's actually the highest antioxidant on the planet. This one here. This one really? right here. I wanted to pick that so many times, but I couldn't pick. I, because you knew. Because when I was weeding this area, I wanted to. You mean I to pick it and do, dry it? Or no, to, I just oh, to, to take it out? It. You wanted yeah, to take it out. But yeah. I couldn't do it. Yeah, this is. She's she going like, ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to have more, more of her. And if you, next if you um, mm -hmm. check in and you feel this stalk, it's a perfect square. It's what? a perfect square. Like lavender? And lavender. yep, all mints. The whole mint family, anywhere in the world you are, will have a square stem. Mm -hmm. And so you could be in Nigeria, you could be in Nova Scotia, mm -hmm. you could be wherever. And if it's got mm -hmm. a square, not a sort of square stem, it's only a perfectly square stem, then it is um, a mint family, which is usually going to be highly antioxidant. Mm -hmm. It's going to be digestive. Mm -hmm. It's going to be antiseptic. Mm -hmm. So this is all heal, and any plant that's had a nickname like all heal, you mm -hmm. know that it's used for many, many things. Mm -hmm. We use the leaf and we use it when it's in flower, and you can eat it. Mm -hmm. What's the name of it again? Prunella the Latin, or vulgaris. The, the Latin is Prunella vulgaris, and the common names are all heal or self heal. I love this plant. It has beautiful violet blue flowers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, beautiful flowers. Oh, it's used on wounds. Should have brought what? A bag with me. Ah, with for the seeds? seeds? Yeah. It's right out the door. The other thing that I learned originally and that has held true is that the plants that are most important for you come to your door. Mm. You want to know what you need? Look at what, and you've been somewhere for five years like you have? Look at what's growing as close to your house as possible. Mm. Right? We could have done an hour just getting from the bench to the road. <laughs> um, this one looks like cat mint. Mm -hmm. This is cat mint. So mm -hmm. another one, this though it gets cats high, what it does for us is it helps us if we have a bellyache. Mm -hmm. okay. It isn't usually yeah. intoxicating for humans, though it can send cats, you know, mm. over the moon. Is it the same as catnip? It's closely related. It's in the family. Okay. It's cat mint, not catnip, but right. it's very closely related. Mm -hmm. And so these are these are best um, when they're in this this state or when they're dried for like medicinal purposes. Both. They're both good. Yeah. Fresh and dry is good. Okay. Yep. Um, this one. This. Oh, that's that looks like dandelion. Dandelion. Oh. Good yeah. for the liver. Yeah. Right here. Also. Okay. Yeah, and much okay. more beautiful. Actually, if you want to look at that, much more beautiful specimens are right here. No offense, but they're. <laughs> you know. um, you see, this is the, the dandelion, dandelion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It gets those beautiful yellow flowers, and mm -hmm. then they turn to puffballs mm -hmm. when they seed. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. where everybody takes them out of their yard because right. of their weeds. And this red right. they, that's they in the stalk, mm -hmm. this talks to us right. about blood. Mm -hmm. you need them. This right. suggests right. to us that our plant, that this grass. plant helps yeah. our blood. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it does. It's an amazing kidney plant, um, which is filled with mm -hmm. blood vessels. Um, Kidneys, as Doug said, liver, red? gallbladder. Hmm? Anything red? Is so red is a sign in nature to look. Mm. So mm -hmm. oftentimes it means blood, sometimes it means a warning. Mm -hmm. So, mm. But it means look and check me out. I've mm. got something mm. important about me. Mm. Um, but I think that you want to move on. So in other words, we could gather enough dandelion here for a wonderful addition to a salad. Mm. Or mm. to saute up with onions and garlic and it's a delicious mm. vegetable. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, too, is wild foods are the most nourishing food we can eat. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the more you can get your food and your medicine, mm -hmm. the better, mm -hmm. right? You can eat three dandelion greens. I've seen people eat three dandelion greens a week and reverse allergies that they've had for years. Oh, wow. I mean, just leaves? Just leaves. Mm -hmm. Three leaves a week. Yeah, I mean, I'd recommend more than that, but like wow. sometimes if I'll have a client, that'll be what they're willing to do. Oh. And then they'll see that their health begins to change because mm -hmm. these weeds, what we call weeds, are the wild food, mm -hmm. right? And they're the most hardy, vital mm -hmm. uh, things growing. And so when we take that into us, that's mm -hmm. the energy that we're getting, right? Mm -hmm.
I, 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 my theory is that we have so many allergies because we're not eating enough foods anymore. Mm -hmm. We just, we don't have enough variety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. One of my very favorite things to do with this that you could all do so easily mm -hmm. is you cut up the plant and put it in apple cider vinegar mm -hmm. and wait again six weeks and then you eat that and you're getting all the vitamins and minerals that this is so rich in and calcium and potassium and mm -hmm. magnesium and um, mm. and also the vitamins are extracted easily into vinegar mm. and it's delicious so that's a great way you can preserve that it's one of the telltale signs of a great family a plant are these spiraling tendrils mm -hmm. you always want to make sure you have the right plant you don't mm -hmm. want to just take if you're not sure, but again, you see the red that's in here? Mm -hmm. I use this plant topically and internally for any kind of uh, red, purple um, wounds, bruises, mm. things like varicose veins. Mm -hmm. It's exceptionally helpful for um, tired legs and for broken capillaries and varicose veins. Mm. Again, you can drink it, mm -hmm. you can put it up in vinegar, mm -hmm. you could apply it uh, externally mm -hmm. on bruises. Like that? Mm. What? I said it's a delicious vinegar to cook with. Oh yes, we made about a gallon this year. It's so yummy. This is wild grape, and I don't know without uh, looking in a book what species it is, but it's a wild grape. It's probably, I love these names, Vitus vinifera. It's probably Vitus vinifera, but I can't swear to that. sap on our feet, which is a super antiseptic mm. substance. Mm. Um, so Stephanie was asking about your uh, cherry trees. Your cherry trees, your black cherry, that's a, a famous um, cough remedy. And like many, many, many uh, fruit trees in our, our area, it does have cyanide in it. Mm. And that's okay because cyanide is one of those things that we need in minute amounts. Mm. Um, it actually is reputed to, and I say reputed because I only like to say the things I know for mm -hmm. myself, but scientifically mm -hmm. they say that the cyanide actually helps kill cancer cells. It's in mm -hmm. cassava too, right? I'm sure it is. It's in, yeah. it's in so heard, yeah. many things. But if you scratch and smell a fresh twig, and how you know it's fresh is if it's got green, mm -hmm. it should have green mm -hmm. when you scratch it. Um, You'll smell, it's a very strong odor that some people love and some people do not like, but I encourage you, that's a mm. black cherry too. Um, you want to learn things by Ooh, smell. It's I strong. Like it. You like it, okay? Yeah, I, I recognize that smell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And an interesting thing I learned is that though it's traditional to use the bark yeah, for cherry. cough. I can smell the cherry. You can smell the cherry. Mm -hmm. And you're also smelling the cyanide. <laughs> um, it's traditional to use the bark for cough syrup but um, you can also mm. use the leaves and you can pick them even in the autumn when they're falling mm -hmm. and have mm -hmm. that for cough medicine. Mm. And what do you, how do you make it? You brew a tea. Mm -hmm. Just a tea, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can do other things, but um, mm -hmm. there's only so much I want to uh, say on the walk and get to the plants. Okay. There's lots of ways you can mm -hmm. prepare medicines, mm -hmm. right? okay. powders, tinctures, extracts. This is a, a great tree for spiritual, um, aligning yourself spiritually mm. for what people tend to call spiritual protection mm -hmm. but in looking to foster the wisdom that we are united with everything mm -hmm. I'm thinking of it these days as divine alignment rather than divine protection mm -hmm. and by the way Stephanie and mm -hmm. everybody this is uh, the grandma cedar needles and you can uh, start to learn them by smell it has a very distinctive smell. So this is our beautiful pine. I may stick to it if I lean back. Mm, the other sap and stuff. Yep. So this is the, um, these are the needles of the white pine. And all the pines, come, how you can tell them from spruces and firs and yew trees and cedars and oh. larches and all the other evergreens is because 
the needles come in packets. They come in packets, right? And some people compare it to like the five fingers on one hand because there's five needles to a packet in white pine. And one of the ways uh, a herbalist named Doug Elliott taught me to remember it was, these are so stuck together, I'm having a hard time showing you, but if you count them, you have W, H, I, T, E, the five needles. <laughs> Let me try that one more time. Here we go, one packet. Wow, it's all stuck together. Mm -hmm. That's why I gave you it. Okay, there we go. Help me out here. W H I T E. Right? They all have the five the five um, needles per packet. The other idea with um, pine is that it's a, a tree that's like community. Right? Because everything is gathered together into one. Right? Like many hands making light work. So the qualities of pine won't surprise you. The qualities of pine are antiseptic for the respiratory system right what do you do when you go into pine woods you take deep breaths right so pine can be used for anything from refreshing and adding more oxygen into your system to helping you if you have a lung infection um, I love it for I make um, cough and throat syrups from it so and when you make pine you never have to dry pine Right, a lot of them you dry, mm -hmm. so you have it in the winter. But pine, because it's evergreen, right, it's evergreen. It's evergreen, so you can pick it. It won't be mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. um, quite as rich mm -hmm. in the spring, mm -hmm. in the winter, as it is in the spring and the summer. Mm -hmm. But it's still a okay. wonderful medicine. And the trick to pine mm -hmm. being really effective is to cut it up small. Mm -hmm. You cut up the packets small mm -hmm. um, for to help it yield its oils um, mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. It also helps your kidneys and your skin mm. will help clear your skin mm. because the lungs are a filter mm. lungs are a filter system mm -hmm. and so when lungs are challenged things can come out in other ways mm -hmm. like through the skin mm -hmm. and so it's an indirect helper for the skin mm -hmm. and you could even um you can like uh if you're if you've had uh, people sick in your house mm -hmm. and a lot of coughing mm -hmm. and stuff you could um, cook up some pine on the stove and just let the uh, the steam waft mm -hmm. through your house and that antiseptic, mm -hmm. you know, think of all our cleaners that have pine mm -hmm. in them. Right, pine soil, all that right? stuff. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a natural antiseptic, think mm -hmm. about it, septic means poison, mm -hmm. right? Antiseptic, septic. Septic, right. right. So this is an antiseptic, it cleans mm -hmm. within, right? Mm -hmm. And you could use it to wash your floors too if you want. Right. right. The white pine to the native mm -hmm. people of our region call this the tree of peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm because of this um, gathering, right, of the needles together, mm -hmm. and because when we're not at peace, we're, you know, we don't breathe, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So they call it the tree of peace, and there are several trees of peace planted in New York City um, mm -hmm. that were ceremonially planted, one in uh, Strawberry Fields in Central Park, mm -hmm. and another one further up in Central Park uh, near Harlem Mirror. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is the tree of peace. Mm -hmm. I don't smell it. Mm -hmm. oh, we have to break them up to smell them. You gotta break them up. I'm smelling like pine right yep. now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, it's an egg. Thank you. Wow. I'm having a garlic mustard yeah. smell. Garlic with mustard. Pine. That's kind of like a slip of pink. Mustard greens, garlicky mustard greens. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A garlic yeah, mustard patch. Mm -hmm. And a little garlic. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this is witch hazel. Oh. This is oh. Hamelis virginiana witch hazel, a Native American tree. Um, this one is actually in nut. You can eat those, um, but I never have, so I'm not sure to tell you how to prepare them. I'm planning to try that this year. And um, I will talk about this one more when we, uh, when we get to where there's a few of them. Here's okay. a natural uh, poison ivy remedy in patients palita, also called jewelweed. And this plant is all over here. Here it is in With yellow flowers yes. and orange flowers, which are very tasty, by the way. And this is a natural poison ivy remedy. And, but the, uh, the thing about the jewelweed, I'll show you, is that it's filled with juice. In fact, here, I'll do it like this. Here. 
Look at that. Look at that. Mm -hmm. yeah, how wet that plant is. Mm -hmm. And so if you, the best thing you can do if you're brushed with poison ivy or potent ivy, as I prefer to call it, and you don't have access to water, the best thing you can do is put cold water on it right away. What was that? That was Sachi. Sachi. There. Oh, if you can't do that, <laughs> and then you have, uh, he does that a lot. And you, if you, you feel this, feel how wet that is. It's yeah, amazing. It's funny. Right? It's soaking wet. Yeah, there's a lot of water that comes through here when it gets heavy rain. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this, um, you would just take that and literally put it on where you have poison ivy and it calms down the rash. What about ra other rash? Any rash? Kind of yeah, you can use it for I other things put, too. I should put the makeup on <laughs> So when you don't know what a plant is and you want to, um, one of the things you can do is you look at the stalk and it's not, it looked square, but when you touch it, you see it's got all these ridges, so it's not a perfect square, so it's not a mint. But if you're looking in a book, you would look to see, okay, it's got opposite leaves that alternate going up the stalk, right? So it's opposite and then alternate. Mm -hmm. And the and flowers... You to find it in flower, because that'll, that's how they list, mm -hmm. they categorize the plants in the books. Mm -hmm. Right. By the color of the flower. And so to know how to like read in the book, they would call this being that the flowers are in the leaf axle. That's where the leaf stalk meets the central stalk. Mm -hmm. Right, they're on a raceme, which means this kind of um, standing up uh, structure that the flowers are. And then we also have this tall one. So, yeah, without, as Doug said, without it being in flower, we can't know absolutely for sure. Mm. Botanists don't consider a plant totally positively identified unless it's in flower. You can make some guesses, but um, let's just leave it at that. Oh, and then your books will also say to you, oh, the leaves are toothed mm -hmm. or they're smooth edged. Mm -hmm. And I always find information on the backs of leaves because then you'll notice if it has a different color mm -hmm. or if the veins stand out in a particular mm -hmm. way. And all those things can help you when you're trying to identify something. Oh, this is one of my favorite important plants. What? Is this the mustard, garlic mustard? That's the garlic mustard. And a plant that you could easily mix it up with until you break it up and smell it is violet. And violet is a really important medicinal plant. Um, this is violet right here. Doug, you want to point some out where yes. we're standing? Okay. Right here. here. Right here. See how it's heart shaped? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the violet, violet mm. is, uh, is a plant that nourishes the nerves, mm -hmm. lungs, mm. Um, reproductive hormonal system, and it's terrific for so many things, but one of the things that stands out about it is it's very high in salicylic acid, so aspirin. that's the precursor to aspirin. So it's an anti-inflammatory that's pain relieving. Mm. Yeah, it's also squirrel. That's the squirrel that Sasha found. That's the red tail. Mm -hmm. It's also an important um, herb for breasts. Violet loves breast tissue, and it's a very helpful plant in both in preventing breast um, cancer, breast lumps, breast fibroids, um, cysts of all kinds, and also it's curative. So I'm not saying that one thing would cure breast cancer, but I'm saying as part of a, um, a program that somebody might be doing. Okay. Just to show you, right, the garlic is not quite as heart-shaped, mm -hmm. right? And it has more of a scalloped edges than the, can you see okay over there? Yeah, than the um, violet. And the violet, is, it's sort of got a wonderful sim symbology about it in a way because the way this opens, the heart opens when it's growing, is it starts like that and it uncurls. Oh. You mean so the violet. The violet. Oh, the violet. The violet. The violet and I feel like it's a wonderful symbol of how we open. We mm -hmm. open our hearts mm -hmm. little by little. Mm -hmm. Right. So... And the violet will be wetter than garlic mustard. So, and, but it's not just breast lumps. Any kind of mm -hmm. cysts in the body respond to internal and external use of violet. It dissolves things that shouldn't be there. Yeah. So great, a great plant it? to use it externally. Mm -hmm. You can chew on it, or you can put boiled water on it. Mm -hmm. And then you use it to focus mm -hmm. directly on mm -hmm. the cyst. This is one that right now I'm drying as much as I can to last me over the winter.
Mm. It's also very nutrient rich. And how mm. do you dry it? What do you I dry yeah. it on screens mm -hmm. or on <clears throat> wicker trays. Excuse me, wicker trays. Mm -hmm. yeah. And not in direct sunlight. Oh. Thank you. Mm. That's a good point. Yeah, in direct sunlight will bleach them out. Mm. So you, you want them to have, be as close to how they look when their roots are in the ground as possible when their roots come out of the ground. Mm. And it does make a difference when you ask them for their help. Mm. Your medicine tastes better. It dries better, it looks better. The plants want to be appreciated and in that way. Better. And it works better. Mm. People are saying, I did the exact same thing you did. Why does my tea taste different? Mm -hmm. you, know, mm. you, just, you get into that relationship and it changes your medicine. You know, indigenous people wouldn't dream of gathering medicine without praying. Mm. And that's, I was fortunate because that's how I was taught. Shagbark hickory. Yeah, oh, that's a hickory. Okay. You have some trees I noticed on the ground in, in nut, hickory nuts. That you could cook and, and eat those. The mm. main thing I wanted to show you here is because this would be so surprising. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily gather here because we have so much PI. But you see these stalks that are here? These are the stalks of the garlic mustard after it's gone to flower and seed. Mm -hmm. So it's growing up that tall. Mm. Right, the garlic mustard, we looked at on the ground. These are the stalks after it's gone to seed. The seeds. So it grows up that much. They're all attached here. Right, the mm. seeds are wonderful. You can grind them up for mustard. Mm. Right, mm -hmm. and like all plants, when you go from the bottom to the top, the leaves change shape completely. Yeah. So you'll see plants like that, you know the shape of that leaf, mm -hmm. but when these were in leaf, these leaves were little tiny triangles at this point because all the energy was going into the flowers and the seeds. This is the, um, this is the kind of grandma cedar that I use most frequently. This is northern white cedar. Mm -hmm. And you can, I assume you're going to let this grow? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because this will be a magnificent kind of guardian tree. Oh, well, there's a bunch right by you. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. Yeah, this one kind of, uh, the deer ate it up and oh, so it got okay. kind of beat up and... This is a wonderful one to um, to dry for burning. Okay, it doesn't. Yeah, see, that's interesting. I the mm -hmm. plant really didn't want to give itself. Mm -hmm. right? It's like you've got healthy young ones right there. Mm -hmm. Leave me alone. So mm -hmm. thank you for that. Um, this is a wonderful one to burn, to dry and burn mm -hmm. for sacred space, mm -hmm. and it makes a beautiful oil. Mm -hmm. A really beautiful oil and the um, insect spray we were oh, using was made there. from a strong tea mm -hmm. made from these. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also a great antiviral plant, but it's not as um, gentle and safe as a lot of the other plants I was talking to you about. This one is one that I wouldn't suggest that you use without guidance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, but used with guidance, um, this is a very important and helpful uh, antiviral plant. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Now this plant, a young herbalist named Misha Schuler and I have actually just last month launched um, the beginning of a national study on this plant because I've been studying this plant for 30 years as a natural contraceptive. Oh, and it's what, extremely this? effective, mm -hmm. this plant, which is the ancestor of our wild carrot. Mm -hmm. If you dig this root, it's carrot, mm -hmm. and it's the first white wow. instead of orange. There'll be a, a, a carrot root down mm -hmm. there? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll dig them up. And the seeds, are a nice digestive aid, and besides the contraceptive, it's got a, many uses. Um, how many yeah. seeds do you have to eat? I'll break that a up. Teaspoon. See how that looks? That looks like a carrot. Mm -hmm. I need to break it up. Yeah. Well, I wrote a whole book about this, but in, in, because there's contraindications and such, but the general gist of the information is one teaspoon of seeds chewed within 24 hours after intercourse has been used as a natural contraceptive for over 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. In what culture? India. And in our country, I know in Appalachia, they've been using the flowers mm -hmm. that way as tea for within a day after intercourse for at least 200 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in my life, I know I've been using it and talking about it and writing about it for um, over two decades. Mm -hmm. So it's very exciting. And if you look, there's this purple dot mm -hmm. in the flower. Mm -hmm. It can range from purple to red to black. 
Actually, every part of the plant tastes like carrots. It's really quite nice if you want to taste mm. a little bit of the flower. Mm -hmm. It's very well known in some places as a urinary system medicine. Mm. Uh, especially the seeds are used for breaking mm. up stones. And if you check out the seeds, mm. they're kind of stony. Amen. Mm -hmm.